Good evening. Welcome to the Alan Osborne Show. We're back. I guess it's time to wake up, and do some more shows. I don't know what else to do. That's right, we're back in the black here in the Alan Osborne Show. Now, before I get started in thing, I know it's been a while. And truthfully, you know, it takes time to do these, but so many people write me going, please come tell us what's going on. So, well, in the tradition of my show, if you can't make this kind of shit up, nobody can sit around and dream up the shit that I talk about. And it's one of your first times coming to the Alan Osborne Show. Know that I just don't make up stuff. I get public documents, I attend meetings, I watch meetings, and I read the documents and I see what's going on. I read the paperwork, I do the math. I don't just come out here and talk out my ass like I'm somebody in the county. Because, you know, there's some great people working in Walton County, but I don't know if y'all have noticed this across the nation. We have two tiered legal system. There's, there's the laws and rules for the masses, and then there's the laws and rules for the elected and connected. Before I get into that, you know, the reason I bring that up is a lot of us are pissed off out here. I know I am. Do you turn on the news and see our, our freaking borders or just a fucking checkpoint to come on in? If you're a Democrat and voted for Biden, you were a dumbass. You know, you ever heard Reagan's speech about the mistakes he made before he went? To ask him one time, Mr. President, what mis previous mistakes did you make? He said, well, my biggest previous mistake is I was once a Democrat. Because if you believe that somebody's got the money to pay for all these people, turn on the damn news. Now, think about it. We're over there worried about Gaza and Israel's border and everybody else's, and our own damn border is sitting open. If you don't understand the government and you're not sure about the House of Representatives from the Congress, from the, who does what and where, just know this. No matter what the party is, the president of the United States can do this simple act. He can turn to the secretary of defense and say, secretary, I believe the nation's in danger. Secure the borders by presidential order. Now, who the hell is going to tell him no? If we can secure other people's borders on the other side of the world, what kind of, what kind of crap are y'all eating that we believe that we can't secure our own? I am quite confident that the United States military have given the order by those appointed above them to secure the U.S. borders and stop the inflow of people. It'd be a done deal. Now, if you, if you liberal and, and um, poor hearted people that are wor more worried about people in other countries than you are our own country, you're the damn assholes that are going to give this country away because no country survives open borders. And I spent 35 years of my life making sure that the Constitution was here and what the hell good is it if a bunch of dumbasses are going to let, you know, people just walk in this country? We have got number one job, secure the borders. We don't know who's coming in. The next round of questions from uh, the public is going to be how are we going to stop it? Because 9-11, the next attack, they won't come to this country. They're here. They're just going to start attacking us. That shit you see over in Israel and Gaza, it's coming to a state near you. And you ought to be worried. Even look at the damn Democrats and liberals in New York going, we can't handle it. Listen, the nation just cannot handle all this. So that's all there is to it. Anyway, I don't know. That's what's going on in here. And, you know, and I'm a little ashamed that of all our leaders in Congress, both sides of the party. Everybody's worried about everything except America. Somebody's going to have to set their own personal issues and finances aside and make sure the Constitution's still in place. I think we're going to have to depend on the veterans to save us. And with that, I'll get into the things that are going on in Walton County, because like I said, you can't make this shit up. Uh, you know, They've got attorney. We still got the interim attorney going on three years. Uh, Danny Lodwell can't seem to understand math. Uh, we're probably paying that joker about 500000 a year, 
who won't be our permanent attorney and won't be the exclusive attorney for us, but they don't want to pay 300000 to maybe one that will. And they can't figure out why nobody will apply. Who would apply with Clay sitting in there? Who would apply with all the issues in the county where it looks like nobody wants to follow the law? That's a time bomb for somebody unless you're Clay. It doesn't bother him because you know how that goes in Walton County. It, all problems usually originate with the word Atkinson in the leadership. So that's a problem. Uh, Barker and Defuniac Springs is a shit show. But let me get on down to some things that are going on right now. And I'm going to do a lot of shows here and get y'all up to speed on some documents. But let's just show you how screwed up the county is. Let's take the horsepower pavilion case. And the 28th of April, the governor of, of Florida told the county to come to an agreement and settle the disputes of code and stuff over the horsepower pavilion. They, after they did that, after the government, this is in April, they had 30 days to get a plan together and they were going to fix it. Then they asked the county needed an extension, not horsepower pavilion to work things out because they were dealing with the customary use shit show they had created and the millions of dollars they spent on this. So they asked for a 90 day stay and they got it. After 90 days, they didn't, the horsepower pavilion people didn't hear shit from the county about what they said they were going to do. They had told them what they were going to do, but they didn't do it. Clay didn't ask for it, didn't ask, answer anything. So then they scheduled it for court in October. So we've gone from April to October. And they extended the stay for an executive session. So court got postponed again. The county asked for an executive session on how to handle this. And the judge gave them an order to handle it and complete mediation by December 7th. Now the county's told Horsepower Pavilion that they're unable to do so. They want to meet, but the county can't. Because somehow with Clay as our interim attorney, uh, he's he's an interim attorney, HUA, head up ass. He's got us into more crap, and we're spending more money trying to cover up. We look we look like cats in the litter box trying to cover shit up. Anyway, you know, so so now the county tells Horsepower Pavilion they can't meet the judge's order. They can't follow the law. They can't enforce code properly. They can't control their employees' bad behavior, and now they can't meet a judge's deadline. I hope you commissioners are watching this. This is what your interim attorney who doesn't want to be the permanent attorney because he don't have to pay for this battle. He, he's in the middle of it pulling all the strings and he hadn't done crap. You know, this is ridiculous. There are massive restaurants going on there. I heard Trey Nick has had the guts to refile over this stuff. And that thing about this with the horsepower pavilion, the other day there was a wedding there and, and there was some McCormick's involved and Boots came. Well, good on you, Boots. Good on you for going out there. And I heard that the horsepower pavilion put on a great wedding for him for, or for their family. But somehow Boots denied being there. But here's the funny thing. About halfway into the thing, somebody called the county, called Code, and Code showed up. And horsepower pavilion said, Go ahead and shut it down. There's a McCormick wedding going on here. And lo and behold, the two-tiered legal system came into effect and nothing happened. They even played the music past time they were supposed to and nobody showed up. You know why? Because an elected or connected, and in this case, both, was at the event. Folks, this is a systemic problem that goes all the way up to Hunter Biden. Now, come on now. We have got to hold our county responsible. They're wasting millions of our dollars. And hard times are coming, people. And stupid people bring more hard times. Well, I hope that's enough to wake y'all up and bring back the Alan Osborne show. In the next few episodes, we'll go over the budget, the attorney, why Defuniac is so addicted to Barker that we can't understand it when he's not even qualified on the job. And we'll go over the 25 plus jobs he's probably had. You can't make this shit up. And until next time, you've resurrected the Alan Osborne show. And, it, and maybe we're going to change it over to a podcast and address national issues too. I don't know, but we got to do something. We can't all just stand there. For this nation to fail, 
The only thing that happened is for good people to watch it and stand there and do nothing. That's the way it was on the Alan Osborne show. It's six November and I'll see you next time. Y'all keep them straight here. You hear?